Welcome to Red Tastic. Story 1 My home has always been a place I dread. You would feel so too when your parents feel every sin you commit and the ones you know you didn't commit are manipulative and controlling. My mom told me I was the devil's incarnate because I refused to join her and my dad to their church, which to me felt like a cult. You are shunned when they feel you've sinned or admired a boy from across the street, loved a little lip gloss on the lips, or wore jeans or loved beautiful colors. They pushed me to the edge until I left after high school. Being the devil's incarnate, they refused to pay my tuition for college, so I had to scrape by. Working two jobs and studying, it was hard, but I got through. My last year of college, I met my boyfriend. He swept me off my feet, loved me like I was the only one in the world. Then we found out I was pregnant. I was scared due to my upbringing. I had a thought like, why bring a child into this world to suffer, especially from those who should love him or her, since I couldn't comprehend why my parents could do what they did to me. I even doubted myself if I could love him or her the way it should be loved sitting close to my window one morning at the early hours of four and watching the sun come up. I knew I was going to be fine. I became convinced when my baby kicked. I graduated and shortly after I gave birth. Me and my boyfriend moved in together shortly before I gave birth. We were doing fine and I felt truly happy in my life for the first time ever. I was proud of what I had achieved and one day I posted a few baby pictures on my Facebook a few days later, my parents sent me a message on social media asking how I was doing and how the baby was doing. I was suspicious. I never spoke to them after I left home. A week later, I found my parents in front of my apartment with gifts for my baby. I panicked and refused them entrance. They weren't happy and kept screaming profanities as they left. The next day, I found CPS on my doorstep. My parents had reported that I wasn't fit to care for a child financially, that my house wasn't child-free, etc. CPS took a look around and realized there was nothing wrong and left. But my parents wouldn't leave me alone, telling me I was damning the child to hell for bringing him or her forth from sin, that they were better in taking the child through the right path which would be free from sin. I had to get a restraining order from the police. I knew I had to move because I didn't know what they would do next. Me and my boyfriend moved several states away and completely ghosted them and anybody else with ties to them and my past life. Two years later, I got engaged to him. We began planning our wedding and he started talking about how I needed my family at a time like this, that I needed to know if they've changed because he felt every woman wants a family around on the day of a wedding. I reminded him why I cut ties with them and that shut him up. Then came my birthday. He decided to take me to a fancy new restaurant I've wanted to go for some time. It was expensive and beautiful. As we entered the restaurant, however, my happiness deflated because I noticed my parents were sitting at a table. I spun on my heel and left without a moment's hesitation and my fiancé kept running after me, begging for me to reconsider because our daughter needed her grandparents and not to be selfish. I just kept walking while my fiancé and parents kept trying to block my way. I took the car and left my fiancé behind. I went straight home, got my child from the babysitter and left home to stay in a hotel. I've been there the past few days and my fiancé and parents have been blowing my phone up. He knew how they treated me. So how was it possible they could be doting grandparents now? I never want to see him again. I trusted him with my life and daughter, and he put us with those who wouldn't give a thought about hurting me or taking my daughter from me. Did I do wrong? Update. So I called my now ex-fiancé and told him to get his ass out of our home into a hotel. I wasn't the one who messed up, so why should I be the one staying in a hotel? Anyways, I moved back home and a few days after, I did. My parents and fiancé showed up in a bunch. My parents kept shouting through the window that they have the right to see my child, as they're the grandparents and they'll take me to court if I won't let them. That I'm a horrible mother living in sin and will lead my child to live in sin as well. I was enraged. 
I called the police on them who made them leave. My parents caused such a scene and I was so embarrassed. I'm now in the process of obtaining a restraining order against my parents. My now ex-fiancé is remorseful. He kinda had a deer-in-headlights look when my parents were screaming bloody murder the day of the ordeal. I think it must have opened his eyes as to what must have transpired in my years growing up at home with them that made me cut them off. I know he loves me and wants the best for me, but he didn't think about what I wanted, only what he thinks that I wanted. His unilateral decision-making is a huge turn-off for me, but there is a possibility that I might forgive my fiancé, mostly because my child needs a father. I told him I needed space, and he is respecting that. I don't intend to keep him away from our daughter even if things won't work out between us. But as for my parents, I am absolutely done with them in every sense of the word. OP, you did the right thing cutting ties with your parents. They are horrible people and even worse parents. How could they think in their heads that they now have the right to see your child? The child they claim is damned. I think it's best your kid doesn't get to know them because they haven't changed and I doubt they will change ever. Your kid doesn't deserve to live and face their toxicity like you did. Take the space that you want, but I would agree that you take your fiancé back. Don't let your toxic parents be the one to take him away from you. But before you do, make it clear to him that if he does something like that again, then you'll be leaving him. Take care, OP. Story 2 How I Caused My Stepdad To Go No Contact With His Sister Background this happened almost nine years ago, the day before Thanksgiving. I live with my stepdad and my mom next door to his mom. I watched my sister's daughter who was two at the time. My stepdad's sister, JNSA, had come up from where she lived for Thanksgiving, but no one knew she was there yet. I had just put my niece down for a nap and wanted to keep it quiet so she could sleep. The next thing I knew, I heard JNSA's two monster boys, who were 10 and 8 at the time, coming up the doorsteps. They even kicked my very sweet dog to make her move out of their way. They were being very loud, so I met them at the door and told them to go back to their granny's house. I didn't think anything else about this until after my niece woke up and I checked my Facebook. JNSA had posted a nasty message about how I had yelled at her babies. She also said she was tired of her babies being treated like redhead stepchildren. If anyone is treated that way in this family, it is me and my siblings. This is a whole other story. She also threatened to kick my ass. When my stepdad came home that day, I told him what happened and showed him the message. He was mad and left to go talk to her. I don't know what all was said, but she and her babies were not allowed on our property. My mom also said she didn't want to see her until we both got an apology from JNSA. We haven't heard from her since. They also have a younger brother and he took my stepdad's side. All family functions are separate, so we don't have to see each other. Update This is sort of an update on my post a year ago. The update is that it has been almost 9 years since this has happened and my stepdad's mom and his brother are wanting him to make up with his sister. My mom told him that this is up to him and she's not going to stand in his way, but she and I will remain no contact until we get an apology. My stepdad's brother has also said that the sister thinks she is the one that deserves the apology. This was a hard no from my stepdad. He said that he will remain no contact also. One thing that no one in this family knows is that when the Facebook post was first posted is that we printed off several copies just in case we needed evidence if she tried anything. Recently, I found the copies and reread them. I remember being scared and confused when I saw the posts. I didn't know she was that angry at me and also scared that she would come over to my house and do something. I also had my niece who was only three at the time with me. I can't believe she thinks she deserves the apology when this all started because I told her children to go back to Granny's house. Then she gets on Facebook and threatens to kick my butt. She never once asked me why I sent them home or even if they could come over in the first place. 
the only apology she will get from me is that I'm sorry that she couldn't take the time to call me to see if it was okay for her boys to come to my house. And I'm sorry that after her children kicked my dog, who never hurt a soul in her life, that I sent them back. I'm sorry that because my niece was so young and your children were playing rough, I wasn't comfortable with them playing with her. Not much of an update, but I needed to vent a little bit. OP, your stepdad did the right thing. I like the fact that he defended you against his sister, who sounds like a nightmare, by the way. I wonder how she raised her kids that they felt no remorse when they kicked a dog just to get past it. Who does that? And who on earth still calls a 10-year-old and an 8-year-old boys babies? I hope the kids grow up to be better humans, but with the kind of mother they have, their chances are very slim. Your parents were right to take your side and demand an apology from your step-aunt, especially after the post she made on Facebook about kicking your ass. I understand why it would have scared you back then. She's toxic and I bet it's a relief that you guys haven't had to interact with her all this time. And until she really apologizes to you, you should stand your ground and remain no contact. Now for some comments. It always blows my mind when parents don't discipline their kids and then are shocked, shocked I tell you, that the rest of the world isn't as tolerant of their monsters as they are. They kicked your dog? Gosh, I'd have a hard time not chewing their parents out myself. Do you know how the boys have fared after 9 years of entitlement? I can't imagine their behavior got any better. Oh, and I nearly struck a child who only threatened to hit my dog. Your step-aunt is lucky she has you for a relative and not me because I would have knocked them in two next week. <laughs>